faults of the little girl who goes to the crumbling school in Dillon are the same as the dreams of a boy who learns on the streets of L.A. We will remember that there is something happening in America, that we are not as divided as our politics suggest, that we are one people, we are one nation, and together we will begin the next great chapter in the American story with three words that will ring from coast to coast, from sea to shining sea. Yes, we can. The greatest American alive. Today, I'm going to ask you the most important question of your life. The most important question of your life. Trigger warning. If you scary, man, it's about to get dangerous. The most important question you've ever heard is, how much did it cost to ride on the Underground Railroad? How much was Harriet Tubman charging to take human beings to freedom? I don't know the answers. I'm looking for you, the greatest American alive, to please tell me. How much did it cost to ride on the Underground Railroad? The greatest American alive. Was Harriet Tubman saying, hey, if you give me $100, I'll take you to freedom? Was Harriet Tubman saying, hey, if you give me $1,000, I'll take you to freedom? What was the cost of freedom? You hear me? As we have been indoctrinated by the capitalist ideology, we think that we're supposed to charge people to get free. There are wonderful American citizens living in economic bondage right now, financial bondage right now. Mental oppression is happening in America right now. Instead of us fighting for freedom, we'll have a discussion on why that person ain't free. We have to have a conversation about the education system in America. We know how this thing is run. The school system in America is run by property taxes. So if you live in a place that has a bunch of apartment buildings, then there's not very much funds going to the local school. It's all government funding. And so now you have to regurgitate the ideology that the government gave you because you ain't got no other choice because you ain't got no funding coming to your school. Please, let's have honest conversations. We know that this system is failing the American person, but instead of blaming the system, we'll blame the greatest American alive. You, the greatest American alive. And, and I don't even understand this. If we're going to have a conversation about freedom, then we need freedom fighters. And I'm looking for some freedom fighters, but for some reason, the American man does not want to be a hero. Trigger warning. If you're scared, go to church. But too many American citizens have fallen in love with the ideology of the prosperity gospel. You actually believe, you actually think that you're supposed to be charged for a blessing. It's a crazy ideology that's running rampant in America. And so since the church is charging you for a blessing, you think by default you're supposed to charge other wonderful American citizens for a blessing. You know there is economic bondage happening in America right now, and I'm looking for some freedom fighters. I'm looking for some heroes. But for some reason, you don't want to be a hero. This is a critical analysis of the American economy. We know that we don't have the industries or the infrastructure to support millions of American men. We don't have the jobs for these guys. But instead of acknowledging the lack of resources for these wonderful American men, we'll condemn them and we'll give them crazy names. Talk down on them, man. We're asking for nasty things to happen in America. Iron Man is not coming to save the American person. Superman is not coming to save you, the greatest American alive. This is not going to happen. There is no man in tights that's going to save the day. The only person who's going to save America is you, the greatest American alive. That's it. We need to engage in honest conversations on how we look down, reach down, and grab other American citizens and pull them out of this financial bondage and help them get free. And we can't be out here trying to tax other American citizens when they're already being taxed. We have to ask more of our elected officials. These representatives are only elected to represent the interests of the people. When they do not hold up their end of the bargain, when it comes to fighting for freedom for the American person, then we have to hold these people accountable. Bernie Sanders. It's, it's wonderful that Bernie Sanders has the words to fight for the American person. Words are wonderful. You're supposed to permeate the ideology of the American people with wonderful ideas. But when you are in a position of power, then you should leverage that position in order to fight for the American person. Listen, here, you just can't stand up in Congress and give speeches as American people are in poverty and suffering right now. Leverage your position. Go and negotiate with your counterparts. I don't care if you're a Democrat or Republican. I don't care. Go and make the deal that's going to give the American person actual, tangible, material goods, okay? Bernie Sanders, you just gave this speech where you talked about so many different things. Many of my colleagues talk to the American people about how deeply concerned they are about the deficit and the national debt. They tell us that we just don't have enough money to expand Medicare to cover dental care for seniors, to cover hearing aids, to cover eyeglasses. We just don't have enough money to do what every other major country on earth does, 
and that is guaranteed paid family and medical leave at a time when hundreds of thousands of bright young people are unable to afford a higher education and millions are struggling with student debt. My colleagues tell us that we just don't have enough money to provide two years of free tuition at community colleges. When we have over 500,000 Americans sleeping out on the streets, including a few blocks away from the nation's capital, we just don't have enough money to build the low income and affordable housing this country needs. You talked about Head Start, you talked about dentures, you talked about health care, but nowhere in that conversation did you talk about the American person. The American dream is number one, a home, and number two, a vehicle. Please ask Project Daddy, are we really supposed to give American citizens homes and cars? Are we really supposed to create a pathway for American citizens to have decent transportation and a safe place to call their own a home? Of course we are. Of course we are. <laughs> don't have enough money. Yet today, the U.S. Senate will begin consideration of an annual defense budget that cost $778 billion. $778 billion for one year. And that is $37 billion more than President Trump's last defense budget and $25 billion more than what President Biden requested. Record $768 billion defense budget for 2022 was passed on Wednesday in a 89 to 10 vote, citing the need to strengthen the South Korea-US alliance and maintain the 28 and a half thousand American troops stationed on the peninsula. The bill emphasized the need to strengthen alliances in the Indo-Pacific region in a bid to compete strategically with China. In the speech that Bernie Sanders was giving, he was talking specifically about war and the defense budget. We just passed a bill for 700 and something billion dollars to go and kill people. And for some reason, you don't think that we should dedicate those resources to heal people. And that confuses me. That makes Project Daddy like, I just don't understand it. What's wrong with you? Why don't you want to be a freedom fighter? Why don't you, the greatest American life, want to be a hero? The American citizen should only be focused on one thing, and that's financial advancement. In the middle of this culture war in which we're waging on each other, screaming at each other, and having all these nasty conversations about who did what, man, they're not thinking about anybody in America who makes less than $42,000 a year. Man, if you're a single mama and you're clocking in every day at Walmart, they don't care. They say, oh, man, you got some food stamps. You should be all right. Oh, we gave your kids some Medicare. You should be all right when the only material good in America that any American wants is a home to call they own. We know this, man. By the numbers, America is a very small nation. If you look at land mass, America has more land than China. If you look at population, America is about one third of the Chinese population. Not only do we have a land advantage, but we also have a resource advantage. We have a luxury of a human potential, but for some reason, the American government refuses to invest in the greatest American life. They refuse to invest in you, and that's what's so nasty. If you can pass a bill for damn near a trillion dollars to go kill folks, then we can most certainly work with big business and industry to make sure that we build American citizens' homes. Yes, we can. Uh, what did Obama say? Yes, we can. The creed written into the founding documents that declared the destiny of a nation. Yes, we can. It was whispered by slaves and abolitionists as they blazed a trail towards freedom through the darkest of nights. Yes, we can. It was sung by immigrants as they struck out from distant shores and pioneers who pushed westward against an unforgiving wilderness. Yes, we can. It was the call of workers who organized, women who reached for the ballot, a president who chose the moon as our new frontier, and a king who took us to the mountaintop and pointed the way to the promised land. Yes, we can to justice and equality. Yes, we can to opportunity and prosperity. 
Yes, we can heal this nation. Yes, we can repair this world. Yes, we can. Yes, we can build American people homes. The greatest American alive. Right now, the American person is under attack from this economy. They're under attack from inflation. They're under attack from legislation. The American government is waging war on the American person, and there is no liaison in the middle fighting on behalf of the American person. And so I'm asking you to be a hero, to stand up for yourself, to say, man, you're not paying me enough money to live in this place that we call America. It is impossible for me to achieve the American dream based on the financial trajectory of my life. And you cannot blame that on me. You cannot blame that on the citizen. We created the institutions that have failed the American person with the wrong ideology, and we have failed to prepare them for this economic shift in America. Rugged individualism only sounds good to individuals who want to take advantage of other folks. And I'm trying to tell you right now that the American citizen has too much power. Your number one power is you own yourself in the physical realm, the digital realm, and the spiritual realm, and that's into perpetuity. That means forever. Can't nobody ever leverage your value against you. It's time to negotiate, okay? This system has quantified us. From birth till death, they have a number attached to you and how they will spend that money. As a free person, as a sovereign citizen, I think that you should be in the conversation on how they spend this money. Direct citizen input. You need to be able to talk directly to your representatives to tell them exactly what you want. We live in this age that had American Idol, and American Idol has transformed into all these shows that have direct input from the viewer. And if we can have that type of engagement for a television show, then we can most certainly have that exact same type of engagement when it comes to our government and our political representation. You're not just going to stand on top of American people and make a fortune as we live in poverty and you say, we're going to make sure we give you what you need. You don't know what I need. You haven't been here. And for every political pundit that represents the left, I need you to come and have a conversation with me. When was the last time that you actually came to the projects? When was the last time you had a meal with a family that was living in poverty to see what the conditions were? You cannot be a journalist from afar looking down at the American economy saying, well, I did a poll. A national poll might consist of 1,200 people to extrapolate the data for 330 million folks, man. Come and talk to these people. Come and have a conversation and engage in dialogue and ask the American citizen, the greatest American alive, what do you need to be free in America? Would you like a house? Would you like a car? And now let's negotiate how we get you a new house and a new car. Because every American citizen living in this wonderful utopia needs to benefit from this wonderful nation in which they created. Bernie Sanders, you don't need to go to the breakfast club. You need to come to the projects and have a conversation with Project Daddy. You need to come and see how these wonderful American citizens live so you stop dangling trinkets in front of their face talking about you get a little bit of this and a little bit of that while we spend all the rest of the money killing people around the globe. The military industrial complex has to stop and we understand it. But instead of using your political power to end mass murder around the globe, you will sign the bill that will kill millions of folk. It's time to have a better conversation. Tell the truth and get some power. For every political pundit on the left, for every political pundit on the right, for everyone who's talking about freedom in America, listen here, your politics cannot be more important than the American people. The thing that you think inside your head cannot be more important than actual tangible American people. We're going to get the American person some actual material goods to improve the quality of their life, and that's it. That's the only thing that political rhetoric is supposed to do. It's not for you to get more power for your side. I'm only on one side, and that's the side of the American people. That's who I'm fighting for. It's time for freedom fighters to unite. It's time for heroes to step up and do the hard work. We have to do the hard work. If you want to fight for freedom, listen here. There is a cash app on the screen, dollar sign, PJDDY. If you want to support real freedom fighters, then hey, man, Project Daddy is out here and negotiating on behalf of you, the greatest American alive. And if you want to spread freedom, please, man, take any Project Daddy video and you share that bad boy. You make sure that the people you love, they watch this here power. They get them some power. You make sure they equip themselves with the information on how to combat a predatory economic system. It's time to fight back and get some power. The greatest American alive. You are the greatest American alive. 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 The greatest American alive.